What's up guys, Dodgers, Randy here for today's game recap. Um, unfortunately for a four to one loss against the Giants, but <clears throat> as always, it's spring training. Um, I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing that. I'm tired of saying it. I'm so ready for regular season to start. Um, and it was none of our big, big league guys who gave up the run, so I'm not stressing too much on it. Um, but other than that, let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, Oh wow, this, this lighting is, looks like I have a black eye, but I don't. This lighting's not doing me any favors. So for those of you who are gonna ask, I don't have a black eye. But anyways, um, so Dodgers lost four to one today, unfortunately, to the Giants. It's the last time uh, we will be facing them in spring training. They had the game last Monday at Scottsdale uh, and now we had today. So we won't see them again until the season starts and that's how I like it. Um, I like our rival, love our rivalry with them. So it just means a lot more when it actually counts. Um, but first and foremost, happy birthday to Rich Hill and Pedro Baez. They both share the bir a birthday today. So let's hope they have a great year and an awesome birthday. I think Hill's now 40, <laughs> I think. Or is he still, I don't know, 39 or 40. Um, I'm pretty sure he's 40. I don't know how old Pedro is, but he's definitely not that old. So happy birthday to them. But let's talk about this game. So today, Tony Gonsolin pitched for the Dodgers. Um, I know a lot of people don't know his name. A lot of you might. Uh, but for those of you that don't know, he's actually our number five top prospect uh, for the Dodgers organization. So he's very good. The only other pitcher he's behind is Dustin May, which is one you hear Dodger fans and the Dodgers praise a lot because of how good he is. And Tony Gonsolin did the same thing today. Uh, he went out there, pitched three innings, nine up, nine down, no hits, no walks, nothing. Um, he got one, two, three, four strikeouts, or sorry, three strikeouts in three innings, um, couple pop out or couple ground outs, fly outs, pop outs, just basic stuff. But I didn't get to watch it. It was only available on MLB TV, and I'm not paying $25 to watch spring training games. So I heard he looked really good. Wish I could have seen it. Kind of bummed that that was the only way to watch it. But I was able to listen, and the announcer sounded very impressed by him. So um, I don't see him necessarily coming up this year, even maybe 40-man roster. I don't know enough about him, honestly. I need to do my homework now. Um, but he's definitely someone to keep an eye on. Um, I hear a lot of people talk about him. Uh, he had a six pitch second inning and these were against all the giant starters. I know they have a, they don't have a great lineup this year. However, they're still big, big league hitters and he set three of them down on strike. So can't complain too much when it comes to that. Uh, so super happy for him. Glad he had an awesome outing. We need that from our minor leaguers. Um, especially with our big leaguers getting up there in age Hill and Ryu both, going to be free agents after this year so Kershaw don't know what's going on with his back uh the more we can get these young guys to get ready and get going the better for us uh Caleb Ferguson had he had a decent day um he did when he first came in in the fourth inning he gave up back-to-back -back singles but then the next pitch or next guy he got a double play ground ball uh only thing is a run did come across from that but he got a ground out after that to get out of the inning. And then to start the fifth, he had two strikeouts, another single, but then a ground out to end it. So definitely, I think, much better than his last couple outings. He's been kind of getting beat up a little bit. Um, Dodger said right now there's still a chance he makes the bullpen coming into opening day. I don't know if he will. I was taking a look yesterday at the 25-man roster and who I think is going to make the cut. And we have a lot of very good pitchers, so I don't know what's going to happen with him. I would definitely not mind having him up there, but he's only 22 years old, so I'm okay with not rushing him up there and letting him get some work in in AAA uh, because I would like to see him as a starter more so than bullpen because um, that's originally what he came up as, struggled, Dodgers put him in the bullpen and he killed it, so if they are able to get that kind of pitching from him out um, of the starting rotation next year, that'd be pretty awesome. So good day for him. Uh, good day for Baez on his birthday. He gave up a single to lead out, lead off the inning. However, um, Barnes helped him out, caught a guy throwing, uh, stealing second, threw him out. Wish I could have saw it. Barnes kind of struggles a little bit. Doesn't have a very strong arm, but from what the announcer said, they expected the guy to be safe, but it was a perfect throw and perfect, uh, uh, <laughs> ball from glove to hand transfer for him to get out quickly. So I have been seeing him work on some of this though at spring training, um, kind of just working on his throws and I think popping out of the stance a little bit quicker to get the ball down. So 
I do want to see more of that from him this year. That was a big difference between him and Grandall, minus the hitting, obviously, uh, especially those power numbers. But he just has never had a great arm. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, happy for Barnes so far, putting up good numbers. Just hopefully better throwout rates this year. Um, but other than that, Baez just gave up the one hit and then got out of the inning. Much better than even his last outing. So he's getting better every outing. Dodgers continue to make cuts. Right now, there's only 40 men left at camp, so they're getting down there. We're going to start seeing our regulars in there every day, uh, probably in the next three to four games. It is an off day tomorrow, so I won't have a video for you guys, um, unfortunately, but it is the last off day until we're getting ready for opening day. Um, but other than that, Jamie Schultz came in, gave up a uh, ground, gave up a single, got out of the inning, no issue. Kevin Qu Quackenbush came in, uh, same thing, one, two, three inning, no issue there. Unfortunately, Stetson Alley and Luis Vasquez struggled quite a bit in the ninth, eighth, and or sorry, the ninth inning, and that's where they lost the game. Up until that point, they were tied one to one. Alley walked two guys, um, and then Vasquez walked a guy and gave up a double which cleared the bases which gave them three more runs to break the tie and beat us four to one um however not that it ma I mean it does matter but he gave it up to the Giants number one prospect so it's not like he just gave it up to some r random prospect who's still hanging out around camp he did give it up to a very good prospect uh Joey Bart he's their catcher their number one so um don't think he'll be in the big leagues this year obviously still with Posey but uh Unfortunately, I think he's going to be one we have to deal with for quite some time. On the offensive side of things, clearly it was not a good game. Um, I think they had four hits, three or four hits, something like that, maybe five. But it just, it, they just, for some reason, when they face the Giants, when they face Ty Block, they just can't hit. I don't know why. Um, but the Giants tend to have our numbers. And when we do hit against them, it's either not at all or it can be high scoring. But either way, not a great game. Um, definitely an improvement for Jock, though. He did come out with a double and a walk. Had a strikeout. However, when you can reach base two out of the three times, especially with a double, great news. Um, always want to see that. Muncie. He's struggling quite a bit. Um, he did have a productive ground out his first at bat. He moved Jock from second to third. But other than that, he grounded out again and he struck out again. He just, I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know if he's not seeing the ball well. I don't know if they figured him out and coming into this season, this is kind of going to be what it's like. He obviously still has the power. He still has a great eye, which is something that makes it less concerning because if his eye is that good at the plate, players don't usually <clears throat> players don't usually lose that. That isn't just like a one season thing. So I think a lot of it is going to have to do with him being comfortable at the plate, but also not overdoing it and trying to like hit better when he's sucking it up and slumping. Like I feel like he might just be kind of pushing a little bit too hard, doing too much at the plate um, to try and get a ball into play and feel a little bit better. So hopefully he can turn it around. Um, as always, like I always say, because I don't want people to think I'm stressing too much over nothing and I don't want you guys to stress too much over nothing, it's still spring training. Um, I will really start to evaluate the players and how I feel about them about seven to 10 games into the season. Even that's early, but just as a kind of general idea as to how they're starting out. Um, so hopefully we see some more from him. Gonna need him to kind of step it up this year in the lineup again. Obviously doesn't need nearly as much pressure as he did last year with Seager coming back and Turner hopefully so far so good starting the, knock on wood, starting the season healthy. So, uh, we'll just keep it going. Turner had a sack fly today, a walk and a strikeout. Good game for him. Um, hasn't been really getting his couple hits these last few games, but I'm not concerned. Uh, he's... Justin Turner, he's not a guy who's going to go out there and put up a long bad streak, and he's not having a bad streak now, but I always have confidence he'll turn it around. Pollock is still struggling a little bit. Um, ground out, fly out, line out for today's game. I'm still having a hard time reading him. I have a lot of confidence in him this this season. I think he's going to be great for the team, um, and I I do have confidence that he's going to put up very good numbers. Hopefully it's him just getting comfortable because so far he just doesn't look good up at the plate. He doesn't look all that comfortable. He did have his first home run. He's had a couple good hits, um, but would definitely like to see more consistency out of him because he's going to be playing a lot. Kike, 
didn't reach base at all. Barnes, same thing. Um, and then Castro, who was in there for them today, had a good day, double and a walk. Um, the worst I would say today would have to be Chris Taylor. He had three strikeouts. Um, I'm not expecting to ever get the Taylor back from 2017. I think that was his career career year. I don't think anyone should expect that from him. But at the same time, I do expect to still see him be very valuable to this team, especially with his versatility on defense and can play multiple positions. But I still see a lot of strikeouts. We saw last year he led the NL in strikeouts and it was ridiculous. And he's not really changing it up this year all that much. Um, still a lot of strikeouts in spring training and he, I'm gonna see if I can actually pull it up really fast, but, um, so he's just not looking all that comfortable at the plate or maybe when it all comes down to it, maybe that is just Chris Taylor and that's just who he is. He's gonna be a swing or miss type guy and when he strikes out, it, it is what it is or he's gonna reach base a lot because it seems like strikeout is almost the only way he gets out. He's quick, so a lot of ground outs Obviously, if he, it's a regular ground out, but he doesn't usually get caught up in double plays. He puts uh, the bat on the ball really well. So I don't think this counts today's games, but if it did count today's game, he has nine strikeouts and 25 at bat. So not great. We can ask for better, hope for better. Um, but, you know, the way it's going with Verdugo, who had a double in today's game, he didn't start. He came in in a later inning, so I think he only had the one at bat. Um, but he did have a double after having a great at bat to show for it. I'm starting to wonder if Muncie turns around and Muncie's having a good season, if Taylor's going to be the odd man out. Because um, I can't imagine bringing Verdugo up from AAA just to have him sit the bench. It seems useless. If you're finally going to bring the guy up, I think they need to get him going and playing uh consistency I think for him any guy who's coming into the big leagues after being in triple a whatever the case may be I think they need consistency to get used to that to get used to the total it's completely different the ballparks are lit up differently you're now in front of 50,000 fans instead of a couple thousand the pressure is a hundred times more than it is in triple a um and the expectations so I'm really curious as to what's going to happen with Taylor this year, especially if he keeps these strikeout numbers up. Um, you don't want him playing over Seager. You don't want him playing over Pollock. I mean, not that he's not good enough, but you signed Pollock to be our everyday center fielder. You don't want him playing over Bellinger. So I think right now a lot of his competition is really Jock and Verdugo. But other than that, that's all I have for today. Off day tomorrow, so I'll catch you guys on Wednesday. Hope you have a great day, and bye, guys.